Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to today's vodcast on the nervous system. Uh, we're going to break this vodcast up into three smaller vodcasts. So the first one, like this one, will be on the neurons. The second one will be on the parts of the nervous system, the central and peripheral nervous systems. And then our third one will be on the reflex arc and how reflexes work inside of our body. So here we are taking a look at a skeleton, and as you can see, we have some yellow string-like structures coming out of the skeleton. Those yellow string-like structures are part of the nervous system. So if I were to remove the skeleton from the picture here, we would have our nervous system left over. So as you can see, our nervous system actually has three main components to it. We have the brain up here, and attached to the brain we have the spinal cord, and attached to the spinal cord we have all the peripheral nerves that run out to all the different muscles and organs and glands in our body to carry out specific actions. Now these nerves, these peripheral nerves, are actually bundles of neurons, or also known as nerve cells. So let's take a close look at what nerve cells look like. Okay, so here we have a picture of a neuron. Now neurons have a different shape and look to them because they have a different function than other cells. We've taken a look at cheek cells before and, and seen pictures of cells and usually they're round in shape or so forth, but neurons look a little bit different. The function of a neuron is to send a message, an electrical message, also known as an impulse, through the nerve from the brain until it gets to a muscle. So this cell is designed to transmit information back and forth from the body to the brain. So let's take a look at the parts of that. First here we have the dendrites. Then the dendrites are connected to the cell body. And the cell body is where the nucleus resides. And attached to the cell body we have the long part of the neuron called the axon. And then at the end of the axon we have these small little buttons called the axon terminals. So let's take a closer look as to how these actually send an electrical impulse through a neuron. Okay, so here we have a picture of two neurons again, so just to label them and make sure that your labels are right in your notes. First, letter A down here we have are the dendrites. Now the dendrites, I always remember them as being like arms reaching out for stuff and grabbing stuff. The dendrites are the parts of the neuron that receive the message from another neuron. And then attached to the dendrites we have the cell body. Next, the structure that we have is called the axon, as we mentioned before, and the job of the axon is to actually send the message from the cell body to the axon terminals, and the axon terminals are found there. That can be easy to remember because terminal means the end, and axon, well, that's the structure of the neuron, so the axon terminals are found at the end of the axons. Now, when you have two neurons connected together, they don't physically touch one another. There's actually a gap or a small space in between the axon terminals of a neuron and the dendrites of another one. And that gap is called the synapse. So what happens is this. The dendrites receive a message and then the cell body takes that message and converts it to electricity. So that's why we have the little starburst here. And then that electrical impulse is going to jump down the neuron along the axon until it gets to the axon terminals. Once it reaches the axon terminal, we take a look down here in the right-hand corner. You'll notice that the electrical signal comes down to the axon terminal, but it doesn't jump the gap. As microscopic as the synapse may be, the gap is too big for the electrical signal to jump. So the electrical signal doesn't go across the synapse. What it does do, however, is that it starts the production of neurotransmitters, which are chemicals. And these chemicals are contained in these compartments called vesicles. These vesicles are going to fuse with the cell membrane of the axon terminals and then release these neurotransmitter chemicals into the synapse. Now this is how the message gets sent across the synapse. Since the electricity can't take it, the chemicals take it. So these red dots here, these chemicals, float across the synapse and then bind to receptor sites on the other dendrites of the other neuron. Now, as we did in the neuron before, when the dendrites collect enough of those chemicals, they will convert those chemicals into another electrical signal. And then this electrical signal will continue to move down the neuron along the axon until it gets to the axon terminal. And then we have our neurotransmitters being released again across the synapse to the other neuron and then so forth until this electrical signal reaches its destination, whether it's a muscle in the arm or whether it's the tissues in the heart or whether it's a gland in your body to release adrenaline or insulin or something. So that's how neurons transmit messages. So let's take a closer look at how these neurotransmitters make their way across the synapse. So here we have a picture of an axon terminal. That's what this structure is here. And here's the dendrite that it connects to with the receptor sites. Now you're going to see a lot of fancy words, and we don't have to know all those words. As I hit play, you can see this action potential, which is the electrical signal, move through the 
axon terminals. And as a result, these channels open up where charged particles move into the axon terminals and cause the vesicles to move. Now the vesicles open up and release these neurotransmitters, in this case a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, to float across the synapse, and then they'll bind on to receptor sites on the connecting dendrite. Those neurotransmitters open up the receptor sites and allow more charged particles to go in, and then these charged particles create the electrical current in the next neuron. So that's how the synapse carries out and transmits the electrical signal coming from one neuron to the next. Now here we're just going to illustrate simply how an electrical impulse is transmitted through a neuron and what it looks like. A neuron consists of a cell body, dendrites, and axons. A neuron generally receives impulses from other cells through dendrites. A neuron may have many dendrites which allow it to receive impulses from thousands of other cells. Neurons are connected to form chains. Axons connect to dendrites across synapses, tiny gaps which nerve impulses can travel across. The cell body of a neuron will send the impulse down its axon. The axon of a neuron will move the impulse toward the next neuron. The impulse will move from the axon through its axon terminal into the dendrite of the next neuron. In this way, the impulse is passed from neuron to neuron via axons. Okay, boys and girls, that concludes part one of our vodcast on neurons and how they connect and send impulses through one another.